Johnny, obviously a topsy-turvy game, that one. Sort of how do you surminise that result and performance? Um, no, I think I mentioned uh, in the post-game uh, interview that I thought first half we were the better team. We created two three really good opportunities, like clear, clear opportunities that we should have been a couple of goals up. Thought 11 v 11, we were good. Um, and then they had that player sent off and and we probably could have done better, uh, especially when we went 1-0 up. We should have uh, seen the game out a lot easier than we did. You know, we, we gave them, really they only had two chances and they scored two goals. So that's disappointing. From our side, we could have defended that better. But in terms of creating chances, um, you know, we created enough chances probably to win three football games. So that's the disappointing thing. But we still got something out of the game. You know, the boys kept on going right to the end, and uh, that, that's uh, that's a positive. You, so you mentioned the first half, and obviously it's 33 degrees of kickoff. It was incredibly hot. Both sides looked like they were struggling. Um, the Western United women's team had to play in 34 degrees down in Canberra. Um, a couple of their players had to go to hospital with heat stroke. We, we've seen this all season that games are being played in unfair conditions that in most other workplaces would be workplace health and safety issues. I guess, what do you think the solution is? <laughs> You're trying to wind me up, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> no, you no, trying, no, 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 no. You know, I know, I know, because I've, I've been saying it for years. I think it's ridiculous that we have to play in this heat. Ridiculous. But, obviously, the football people that played and also coach, they don't always listen to. Uh, I, I, you know, it's... it's you know, they want to make it a good spectacle, but you can't have a good spectacle when players are struggling to run. And, you know, and then health and safety as well. Um, I think they said the heat bowl will just underneath of getting the game postponed. But, you know, it, it's, it's hard work for the players. And, and then you can get injuries. And then, you know, the, the recovery factor and all, all these things. And, and not to mention, you know, you, you want to see a good football game. And uh, so I've been saying for years that we, I would like to see the game um, played in the winter, but I can understand all the other obstacles that we have in changing the seasons. But you know, it's it's unfair on the players and the supporters. You know, when you have to watch a game and play in a game with that heat. John, is there always a temptation? Like I'm not saying you do this, but as a, as a coach, you might think, well, I'm just going to conserve all my energy for the first half. I know it's going to be hot, and then hit them in the second. Like it doesn't exactly invite like it. Do, yeah. Yeah. It doesn't invite a, a, a high intensity game. It doesn't invite you know teams to press you know for long periods. It doesn't invite that you know you. Uh, also, the pitch dries up very quick, so you can't shift the ball as quick. Um, you know, we knew that our subs will make uh, an important impact. You know, that was always planned before the game. You're hoping that players will be able to get through the game um, as much as possible. Uh, but yeah, the, you, you're right. It's 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 hard to really you know play your style when when it's like that. You have to try and be smart about it. And I thought we were. I thought the first half we were very smart. We knew when to press. We knew when to sit off. We knew when to go quickly with the ball and catch them on the counter. We knew when to control the game a bit. Um, you know maybe that's probably why when we went to, against ten men in the second half we were a bit fatigued and you know we we didn't do it as well. But. In saying that, you know, we still had the opportunities to win. Um, John, can you detail a few of the specific ramifications that, that playing in the seat can have? Have you got players right now that are perhaps suffering from the consequences of that? Yeah, you just suffer heat stroke. You, you know, you suffer, um, you know, especially, you know, uh, some of the older players can suffer, you know, muscle injuries because they're dehydrated. Um, you know, there's all sorts of things that you suffer from when you play in this heat. Um, you know, we, we try and prepare them as much as possible. Not easy in Melbourne <laughs> because you don't really train in the heat in Melbourne. So this is a big shock for a lot of our players because we, uh, you know, we uh, have been training in like 18, 19 degrees. You know, a couple of days in Melbourne, it might get to 40 degrees, but you know, then we train a little bit earlier. So we try to avoid the, the real heat. Uh, so it's hard for the players to get their body accustomed to it and, and acclimatised to it. So. But we've got another game next week at 3 o'clock on Sunday. I'm praying that it's not going to be this hot. <laughs> but if it is, we just have to deal with it because it's not going to change at the moment. No, and I guess just on that, you, you obviously want to balance and mitigate any sort of risk that the heat brings. Like, it, how does that impact the way that you deal with your substitution? Because obviously you don't want players that have started the game exhausting themselves. But at the same time, you don't want to bring, you know, say for example, an Alessandro Diamante on 
who you know obviously is you know a, a, one of the older players on the squad, you know, and possibly risk exhausting him by bringing him on earlier. Yeah, that's the thing that you and you have to rotate players. You know, there's last week we played in Tasmania, which was very taxing, and uh, quite a few players were cramping. Dylan Parise had a you know a bad severe cramp. Um, you know, so you know you you see the heat, and you have to think about you know when do you can you put him on? When can he start? Can he not start? You know, especially those wide players and, and those midfielders, they do a lot of running and a lot of high speed running. You just have to be aware and try and you know change when you can and and deal with it as best as possible. John, I just guess in the kind of the context, you know, last week we spoke about how the city game was kind of a blip. You're really. You know, coming away here is not an easy place to play, but you've shown a fair bit of resilience, aren't you? Even if you know you did ship a couple of goals today. Yeah, we are. You know, that, that's uh, I think one loss in seven. You know, you take away the city game. It, the disappointing thing is we believe and felt that we could have and should have won that game. But you're right, that we're getting back to, you know, being a team that uh, can really compete and win games of football. Um, and, you know, we didn't allow them too many chances, to be fair. So, you know, our overall structure was good defensively and then going forward, we created enough. So we, we're getting better. The, we know that the league's very tight. So we just have to keep going and keep keep improving and keep believing that we're going to make finals and that's that's our our goal.